Has it gone? Do you see anything? You're live! All right. I think we might be actually live now or something. I'm going to just keep on talking randomly for a second until I can see on the stream that we are actually online <laughs> uh, because I have a hard time telling. We have, um, to, we, have to, we have to go by what YouTube shows us to make sure yes. that so, we are going actually live. Yeah, my phone still says waiting for death by improv, which is not exactly waiting, waiting for, Godot. for Godot. Oh, here we are. I see us on the phone, hey, and that I means we are, in fact, live. <laughs> uh, so hi, all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, we are, I am Mick, and that is Farley, and we are part of death by improv and uh, suburban improv by extension, I guess. Um a couple of weeks ago, we got the chance to do some live movie riffing at our show uh, at the Union County Performing Arts Center, and it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we figured maybe we'll put that out there for a wider audience to get a chance to, to sample it and have it forever immortalized on uh, YouTube for us to watch at our leisure. Yep, exactly. I, agree. Well, I, I, I guess I would like to watch i would like to watch us a lot so yes i do, I do too i find uh i find myself watching some of our pandemic shows fairly often when i have nothing yeah. else better to do because <laughs> i am a narcissist and i'm very vain um so yeah for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept of movie riffing it's basically uh we're gonna show you some old short films from the stone age and we're gonna provide a little funny uh running commentary on them as we go along uh, we've got five really, really beautiful gems of shorts tonight, uh, which we hope that you are going to enjoy. Um, special thank you to uh, my wife, Caitlin, who's just over that way. She's manning the tech yeah. end of stuff. So she's going to be putting on the videos for us and queuing them all up for me and me and Mike to make our, our ha-has. Yeah. Caitlin says hi. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Uh, I want to also thank, we had a lot of help with writing this. Uh, so in addition to me and Farley, we had, uh, writing from my friend, Frankie Coleman, uh, fellow DBI member, Michelle DeLuca, uh, mm -hmm. my brother, Jim Murtha, yeah. uh, my wife, Caitlin, as, yeah. uh, I previously mentioned, uh, and our friend Ed Schilling. Uh, yeah. so it's a bunch of very funny people helped to make this, uh, thing go. And we're very grateful to them for their help. And we're grateful to those of you who are uh, joining us tonight. Uh, so uh, did you have anything you wanted to add on top of that, Mike, before we get into the first uh, short? Um, no, I think you covered quite a bit. Uh, maybe we'll go over to some DBI shows later on in the show. But otherwise, I am ready to jump on in and start learning some things. All right. So our first short that we have for you this evening, uh, it's a little... Uh, short called how do you know it's love and it's about how your grandma and grandpa met i guess um and how they determined that they were not right for each other and <laughs> I, maybe i summed it up wrong but it's a very very informative very fun little piece and uh i think me and mike are gonna kill our cameras and let the mm -hmm. short take center stage so babe yes. if you're ready let's uh roll that beautiful bean footage And sorry, just waiting for the video, which will be on momentarily. Here we go. Here we go. How do you know it's love and not just your parasocial fixation on John Mulaney? Oh, Professor Hill says we got trouble right here in Caroline. Yeehaw! 997, 998, 999. Oh, how I love the squirrel cards he gave me. Hmm, pretty ripe. Alas, this poor corsage, how I mangled him. I love you, Nora. Do you love me? Oh, I don't know, Jack. You're the only girl I've dated in, in two months. We get along fine. We get, we get along it. fine. How romantic. I'll have to think about it. That means no. Mm -hmm. 
Kramer! Have a nice time? I'll see. Jack's awfully handsome and such a smooth dancer. I feel like I've been hit by a smooth criminal. How can I tell if... I mean, how did you know when you were in love with Dad? Well, he oh. offered my father two goats and a mule. I've been in love several times before. Mom, I got you so stink. I recognize the symptoms. Several times? Mm-hmm. And each time I thought I'd found my Prince Charming. Well, then I was cast in the Wicked Witch of the West, and I forgot all about him. Well, then, how can you tell when you're really in love? Well, Lady Sleepwear by J. Buffett of Margaritaville. I'll have to think about that. Let's say tomorrow, shall we? All right. Well, I hope you're not creeped out by the Renaissance artwork we've flung about your bed. Good night, dear. Most people fall in love quite a few times. I wonder if Jack knows that. Oh, Jack you, knows, honey. Jack knows. Two months. We're really in love. Uh huh. And you were really in love with Betty and what Mary. What a darling and little spaghetti scrap top. <laughs> and there'll be others, I suppose. Oh no, that's over with. You know, Bob, Nora's the prettiest girl I've ever known. She's just as beautiful as... Beautiful? And you think that's all that matters? Oh, hurry up and get in bed, will you? Uh, Dad's been pretty gun-shy uh, about all the love stuff since the You divorce. feel this way when you found love with Jean? <laughs> oh, look. I've felt that way lots of times. The trouble with you is, you don't seem to understand what love is really about. Well, I went to Harvard. What do you expect? A couple of times, do a little necking and you think you're in love. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. All I wanted to do was ask. You don't have to get sore about it, do you? Oh, oh getting sore is the best part about love. Look at it this way. You just haven't been around enough to know what love really is. Believe me, it's nothing like the slush they give you in the movies. It's more like a Slurpee from 7-Eleven. Well, I don't know, Mom. That's right. You don't know. Maybe you would understand better if... Say, it's Jimmy I've got Stewart. No, no, no. The thing you can't need to know about lo 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 love is. Sure, Bob. That would be swell. Sure, you wouldn't mind. Not if you let me get some sleep now. Good night. Good night. Uh, sleep in your own bed, Jack. Thank you. Gosh. Oh, Jack, that sounds like loads of fun. Mm -hmm. See you tonight. Goodbye. Guess what, Mother? Jack and I are going on a double date with Jack's brother, Bob, and his girlfriend. They're engaged and so much in love. Jeannie has the most beautiful diamond. Oh, that's Diamond Bob. equals love. I've met Bob. I think he's awfully nice. Well, well he's awful, at least. And speaking of love, weren't you and I going to talk about that today? Yes, we were. Wow. I was thinking about your question, and... Well, suppose we look at these snapshots together, hmm? Snapshot? Mm-hmm. Well, oh, she's going to bring out the Kama Sutra. I know it. Just thinking that they might help you to understand how your capacity for love grows and develops just as you grow and develop. Here. Look at this one. Oh, it's Winston Martin. Churchill. You, to keep there. you know, in a way, you were in love even then. Every baby loves its parents for their care and protection. Of course, some people expect that care and protection all their lives. They never grow up. They're called Toys R Us kids. Now, compare that with this picture. <laughs> oh, that's the boy who used to live next door. My, how he did love his teddy bear. Love? Yes, that's we right. caught him in the act with the bear, that's sweetheart. <laughs> Possessiveness. A love for the things you own. Some of us never get over being possessive when we're in love. Do I we? become a past parsable when I'm in love. Now, here's a snap that shows how we learn to return love by doing things for others. Well, what about love of our friends? Isn't that a stage of love? Yes, I think it is. Here, look at this. Wow, an Andrew's sister's rookie an card. Andrew. I took that picture with my first camera. Oh, I know. There was a time when I wouldn't look at anyone but my special friend. I named I him Yuck. He lived under my bed, and only I could see I'm him. I'm going to go through a similar stage. 
when they stick together in gangs and won't have anything to do with girls. Yeah, a lot of things get sticky for boys around that age. Now, let's see. Oh, do you remember this picture? Oh, he never really did grow into his face, did he? That was two or three years ago. He never knew how much I loved him. I guess he never knew I existed at all. At least before well, we he took out that restraining order. Like that, huh? <laughs> Teachers or sports stars or movie stars. Then after a while, there's a stage that some people call puppy love. Eat it, eat it. But it's more. I'd almost completely forgotten it. Remember how important it seemed at the time? I'll say. And it really was important as a part of learning how to love and be loved. I think I can tell puppy love. Oh, look, there's the couple who met at camp last summer. <laughs> I certainly wow. have been. Yes. Jeez. And that's another thing. Let's not look anymore, dear. They get sort of graphic from here on out. <laughs> Sometimes this is mistaken for mature love. But there's a difference. Mature love. You that's know, like you find on silversingles.com. <laughs> How can you tell when love is mature? Well, mature love is more... Slippery. Simple. Mature love has something of the other kind of love in it, and something more. It's tender, unselfish, cooperative. Painful, but that's a, a safe word. I want to have that kind of love. That's a good idea, dear. And if you aren't sure, you can always ask yourself some questions. Are we really interested in the same thing? Do we feel at ease together? Mm. Are we proud of each other? Is he good in the sack? Do we agree on the basic things, such as religion, marriage, children, money? And who put the bump in the bump a bump a bump? I know that'll help. I hope so, dear. Where do they keep pulling these lamps from? <laughs> Are we really interested in the same thing? Do we feel at ease together? Are we proud of each other? Is he good in the Are sack? Are we on basic things? I wonder. Woo, 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 wonder. Yeah, mature love. Have a seat, Dr. Jones. Lao Che will be with you shortly. I've never seen a Chinese doorman before in my life. We've yeah. been here for quite some time. Oh, I'm having a wonderful time. I've never been here before. Oh, we're so glad you could come. This is one of our favorite spots. Yes, we sort of found it together, you might say, and we come here quite often. Oh, the real Chinese dishes are over here. Thanks, Try the mac and cheese burger. What? Oh, my draft notice. I'm off to Guadalcanal, honey. And guess what? You're going to have to sit through another concert by that young French pianist you didn't like. You mean the same one we saw last season? That's right. And maybe this year you'll agree with me that he has real talent. Well, maybe. But only if he's improved. Oh, Bob. Well, at least we'll have fun debating it. <sighs> me and Jeff never debate the talent of any pianists. Are they interested in the same thing? R r ramen, ramen noodle. We have many things to talk about and do together. Say, Nora, talking about music, have you heard the new recording of the Brahms Violin Concerto? Well, no. I, I guess I never really learned to appreciate classical music. Uh -huh. uh, stupid, stupid. Are Jack and Jack interested in the same thing? I wonder. Okay, 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 okay that's I'm enough. done, I'm done, that's I'm enough. done. Thank you. You know, there's, there's no telling what we'll get, but I'm willing to take a chance if you are. Oh, that's the fun of it, Bob. What about some of this watercress salad? That's no, a very nice. salad. How exotic. Bob and Jean certainly are at ease with each other. But what about us? Well, I've made up my mind. I'm going to have the leg of lamb. Mm. Oh, well, I thought it would be fun to try a Chinese dish. That's all right if you like that stuff. Me, I'll stick to the lamb. Well, oh, come on, Nora. Take a chance with us on the lobster cantonese. Oh, I like that. No. I need to enter I a throuple with these guys. They're fun. 
be so unpredictable. I guess I am, too. We don't really know each other. And Mom talks about being proud of each other. I wonder if I could ever be as proud of Jack as Jean is of Bob. I feel as of Andy and Tim is of Beth. Not right here and now, maybe. But he does have his point. And she when was dilated over 15 centimeters, no lie. <laughs> but I wonder if we'd ever agree on basic things. Mm -hmm. Jack, do you know who I saw today? I saw Bill Johnson on this line. You know, they've got a fine pair of... It was of nicer than the Mike the Serving Tray. Kids are such fun. Don't you think so, Nora? Well, I... Oh, here's the waiter with our soup. Oh, save by the soup course, thank God. Children. Oh, we've never talked about things like that. Or religion. I never told Jeff that I was a child once. Bob and Jean really understand each other. They do have a mature love. Don't. 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 Nora, I... About our talk at the dance room. In the garden, you know. Well, I... I guess after seeing Bob and Jean... Well, I think that love... Mm -hmm. a, a real mature love is more than I'd imagine. I guess so. On Bob and Jean, it looks all right. Mm -hmm. We're not ready for that kind of attachment, are we? We can still have a lot of fun, can't we? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you like oh. How about going roller skating next Friday night? Oh, Jack, that's a wonderful idea. That's the kind of fun I like. What time? About 8.15. Oh, and I'm really very anal retentive about time. Uh, you'll find that Bye. out. Good night. Well, time to mail my ear. Dum -dum 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 -dum. <laughs> Tusk. Yeah. All right. And that is how do you know it's love? I think we all learned a very oh, important love. lesson about love today. Uh, I learned that it's most likely best to just watch other people and how they are couples and just imitate that. That's what I learned from that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which is why I've been meaning to tell you that my wife and I are going to be moving in with you and Dar. Uh, we just want to we just want to learn from the masters and see what we're doing wrong and pick up a couple of tips. Perfect. I hope you don't mind cramming into a crib. That's our spare room right now. So you, you guys, that's, that's the only way I ever sleep. Beautiful. That's All good. Right. You guys can monitor us and just watch Here us. Here we go. Uh, by the way, it might be good to remind any viewers at home that uh, one of us lives next to a train station. The other one lives next to a firehouse. So uh, you might get a couple of special guest noises. Uh, we will do our best to minimize those, but that's a little bit beyond our control. No, no, no. I have a soundboard. I'm doing those on, on purpose. Oh, cool. <laughs> when you hear those noises, I'm doing them on purpose. Uh, that's, oh, maybe that's why Schwarzenegger is going to show up for a few riffs in the next one. Huh? Right. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Who's uh, your father? <laughs> there is no bathroom um so yeah our next short is a little one called what mr bell had in mind and it's all about the correct way to use the telephone uh so caitlin if you could just make sure that is queued up and uh we will take it away in just a moment oh, i started screaming the Chevrolet dealer presents West Side Story. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not what I use my phone for. More than 75 years ago, Roger Pepper taught the band to play. His name was Alexander Graham Bell. Everybody knows that. But who knows precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind for his ingenious new device? Who knows? Bonos. One, eight, seven, seven, cars, four, kids. <laughs> oh, he called the atonal droning hotline. Homicide. <laughs> Donegan speaking. Ronnie Donegan? Be right over. At the tone, the 
time will be five. Five. Exactly. Ah, yes, everybody's favorite time of day, 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> oh, he's calling the Andrew sister to cancel the, the date. Oh, if Donna Reed never married Jimmy Stewart, and it's a wonderful life. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Danny, you're home. No, I'm on the phone, you old bet. <laughs> oh, Lucia. <laughs> Tell me more. Like, does he have a car? <laughs> Five three zero oh, nine. All right, the number you have dialed has been disconnected. This hmm? is a recording. Oh, screw you, Jenny. They're calling Charles Lindbergh with their ransom demands. And they have we're going to go and the whole town. Right. There's more life than boys. Like, have oh, you heard about furries? Furry. It only takes a few minutes. My name is a Spider-Man! <laughs> oh wow, this is Bing Crosby's first nude scene. Of all the cockeyed times for the phone to ring. Yeah, that better not be a telemarketer, otherwise it's ring-a-ding-ding for them bozos. <laughs> Few products of man's ingenuity have been so widely used and misused. Uh, clearly someone's never heard of the sport. Everybody knows everything about the telephone. Oh, good, so we can leave early. Okay. Also, what he did not have in mind. Here, for example, is Agatha Fusemith. John Goodman and Drag. ...about the local church bazaar. Church bazaar, church bazaar. For some reason, Agatha can't get to the point. The weather leads to summer colds, and summer colds to that nice new doctor in the church membership. And Mrs. Evans is just confused. Mrs. Evans, What's just confused. Fall this fall on Fox. When is it gonna end? Now, by this time, Mrs. Evans feels trapped. And Look, I'm trying to match my outfit to the wallpaper. Can you get to the point? <laughs> Oh, that woman. Bam, lamb. Mr. Bell did not have oh, this. Thank God mind. they dumped out of her audio. I think we we're going to hear what Agatha cursing up a little bit. Oh, just by writing a letter. Organizing. That makes it easier on you, and it makes for a quicker, more pleasant way of getting things done. Hmm. Precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind. Oh, that and finding pictures of celebrities. <laughs> big, busy world of business. Yet in his wildest You see what happens is the salmon swim upstream and then they lay their eggs in gravel beds to be fertilized. Under the telephone. <laughs> That's just one important feature, Mr. Reynolds. See, young, young fellows today won't work the way we did 11 years ago. Power train. Uh, that's the end of the rear axle. That's power. P O W. The important thing is this. Yeah. Sounds real interested, doesn't he? Mr. Bell definitely did not have this in mind. Mm -hmm. it's, here, get over here. Well, it's unstrategic you. for two reasons. Here, check this out. You think it's good enough for the New Yorker? Really <laughs> sell a complicated piece of equipment over the telephone. Whatever your product, your prospect has to see its features and see them demonstrated. And you do get free six months of serious XM. Your prospect has to understand your product's benefits to him before he'll buy. I like making a turn here. I like the major of spin spin. In fact, it doesn't take any effort at all. Oh, I'm not your father. Telephone fit in here. I think he told him where to fit it in before he hung up. What he had in mind for the telephone was not keeping people apart, but getting them together. But using the telephone to establish an opportunity to do a Oh, no, he has a vacuum. Or to bring your prospect Welcome to, the to right Stove World. Hmm. But here's another example of something Mr. Bell would frown on. You should read some of my poetry. This energetic young man is Pete Wilson. And believe it or not, he's fairly intelligent, too. He's an air conditioner salesman. And he shrewdly figured out a sales plan. There must be a tremendous concentration. Oh, I'm market. sorry. I already have a husband. <laughs> All he has to do is cover that market like a blanket. A wet blanket. Mr. Bell would approve the determination but he did not have such a pedestrian approach in mind. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. 
The time-saving telephone calls our young salesman can quickly determine his air conditioner market. He is a potential prospect. They must have put out a casting call for sweaty ethnic types. <laughs> Ready to concentrate his selling time and energy on real prospects. Mm-hmm. And the telephone can really be an extra sales tool to help any salesman create selling opportunities. Mm-hmm. For instance, with his telephone and an owner list, a service file, or a registration mm-hmm. list, depending on mm-hmm. his field, a good salesman can literally ring hundreds of prospect bells right from his own office. Uh, so telemarketing, this is what Mr. Bell had in mind. Particularly like this is just what Mr. Bell had in mind. Oh, that's right. Even when the telephone is used strategically, unfortunate things happen that Mr. Bell did not have in mind. For like example, sexting. Mm. Hello. Mr. Carson, this is Wally Smith, Dependable Life Insurance Company. Uh, did you know your wife put out a lucrative policy for you this morning? What's that about? Not with you, brother. I am Walt freaking Disney. Why don't they like me? And it's really not the telephone's fault. So lay sure, off. He that Wally's actually a nice, friendly guy. But he doesn't sound that At least way. That's what his Twitter bio says. Like a lot of other people, Wally doesn't project his true personality over the telephone. And again, the answer is so simple. Before you make your call, try it's imagining how you might sound over the telephone. I am sure you'll want dependable insurance protection. I don't know, it's to be lucky charms. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Carson. I'll be glad to drop by and explain it to you. Well, whoever you are, before you make that next call, think a moment. Remember how Agatha ambles on and on mm-hmm. and make sure you... Mm-hmm. Paper plates, folding chairs, lemonade, plastic sheets, bleach, lie, machete, no, soda pop. You see, sir, I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty-bitty... To arrange your selling Come to the rowing machine. And remember how valuable the telephone <laughs> is. Oh, my ankle! <laughs> when it's also used strategically to create new selling When did strategically have a drop a syllable? And most important of all, remember how easy it is to give the wrong impression over the What telephone. do you mean you don't like my Gilbert Gottfried impression? <laughs> Oh, I can't believe they called the Carol Jennings phone sex now. personality will go out over the telephone just as Mr. Bell had in mind. For he was not only an inventive man, but a man of great vision. X-ray vision. His first telephone message was sent quite by accident. I made Rocky Road ice cream. <laughs> what? Ooh, the first call was obscene. Mr. Bell, I... I heard you. I heard every word you said distinctly. You said, Mr. Watson, and If you're not come careful, here. the cops will hear him, too. <laughs> or so I did. Oh, that came out wrong. Well. thing for you, Mr. Bell. Everything you've worked for, every dream has come true. It works, Mr. Bell. It works. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I dare say you're right, Watson. I have nothing left to live for. Open up a, a new age of communications. There'll be a day when, when people will think nothing of conversing of sending pictures of their privates you mean as an everyday occurrence yes watson nudes in the palm of your hand watson (laughs) when people will think no more of speaking to someone miles away than as if they were in the same room when you put it like that the telephone kind of sucks yes watson i can foresee the day when Homes will be linked to other homes. And holy matrimony. Factories to stores. Cities will be joined to other cities. And nations to other nations. But tell me how, Mr. Bell, how can you fulfill all these wonders? What? What? No, really, who would know better than I? Please do not reveal the surprise ending of what Mr. Bell had in mind. (laughs) Any resemblance between Alexander Graham Bell and Don Amici was strictly intentional. You know, I still can't believe Don Amici picked this as his follow-up to Cocoon. You want a sandwich and you want it fast? We'll keep your jam handy. Chevrolet reminds you to polish your Don Amici busts nightly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. And that is how the telephone was born. Uh, so I learned, uh, I think, even more from that one. 
Uh, I learned that Don Amici creates the telephone. Exactly. So we should be calling uh, the, the, the ringing Amici's. Exactly. And <laughs> um, yeah, I learned that the elderly did not know how to work telephones even back in the 1920s. Nope. So that's good to know. They rejected it. They rejected that technology. <laughs> they yeah. said, no, I don't want this in my house. <laughs> no, it's got Satan in it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got another short uh, lined up for you now. Uh, this one is about uh, your favorite seaside resort in, and mine within the city limits of New York City, Coney cross, Island. Cross two uh, bridges to get there. Exactly. And, and you, the, the, the place you cross the bridges to get there and you wonder why you bothered. It's um, so, uh, Caitlin, if we're ready, we can get Coney Island uh, underway. Yeah. It's all right. George, George, George of the jungle. Here we go, here we go. Daddy, you said this was an island. This is barely a peninsula, Daddy. Daddy, what else are you hiding, Daddy? Coney Island. Coney Island, jewel of the Adriatic. With its beach miles long, all peppered with people. The place where merriment is king. And heat stroke is queen. <laughs> uh oh, this is a drug people, isn't it? One million folks. Folks who are just like all of us. 10,000 youngsters and oldsters. All swimming, playing, or resting. All getting their share of the sun and the fun. All refugees from the city heat. Here where the beach meets the cool Atlantic. And the river meets the Here sea. Here for a lark at Coney Island, world's biggest barrel of fun. It's about to explode. President Some Wilson joins the fun. On the $4 million boardwalk. While others snap pictures for proof back home oh. that they really were part of this fun-seeking throng. Make sure to tag it hot made tag repairman summer. Here, there, and everywhere, it's hard I to I need my love to be time. here. Rivers of humanity in carnival mood pour through Coney's many streets. I call it Coney because it's my friend. Hurry, hurry, step this way. The Great flavors like mango, and cherry, and blue raspberry, watermelon, chocolate, and a lot more. You go to the best in the boardwalk. There's no dairy, no fat, no cholesterol. Don't pass up your free sample. <laughs> oh, oh boy. I think this part's going to get a little rough. Yeah. Oh, um, no, that's just... Oh. oh, thank God. Thank you. Yeah, just, 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 folks, believe me, you don't need to know what you're not seeing here. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's fine, exactly. Yeah. Oh. This way, friends. You can't go home without a permanent souvenir. Now take your That's places. what they call chlamydia That's in those right. days. Now, <laughs> a big broad smile. Watch the birdie and presto. We have down on the farm right at Coney Island. We're having fun. <laughs> Hitler's death car! Tomorrow, getting someplace today. It's Andy Warhol. <laughs> Well, I can't come back. I don't know how it works. Cries galore, cries and screams of delight in these cars that tilt and slide. Sometimes even on purpose. <laughs> From one attraction to another, the eager million moves on. Oh, these airships are the hardest part of Super Mario Brothers Three. Thrill as you develop a lifetime of back and spinal problems. Thrills and laughs. Ride the tilt a girl. <laughs> Just a matter of hanging on. Put it on black. Faster it goes, and here they spill in every direction. It's fun for riders and spectators, too. And remember, at Coney Island, survivors always ride free. <laughs> if it's oh, Jane Mansfield, the ride! <laughs> 
It's here at Coney Island. And all the swings in this huge fun center is not on a dance floor. In the tiki 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 Deep fried, Texas style. With thousands of bushels enjoyed every day. One dag wood of hot dogs, please. The greatest eating invention is the Frankfurter. For it was here when the place was a sandbar known as Coney Hook. It's only the freshest stucco for these piping pups. I just want the mustard. Caviar. After dinner, it's time to check your weight. He'll guess within three pounds, or it costs you nothing. I guess your weight attendant was found beaten to death today. Coney's most famous free attraction is its big bathing girl review. Where oh, it's a parade of Mickey Mouse wives! <laughs> those who brave the surf, and those who never go near the water, parade before big crowds and critical judges. Oh my god, that's my grandma! Ooh. And redheads, all so shapely and lovely that the judges. Uh, when Harvey Firestein saw this, it was like when Kevin Smith I saw Slacker. <laughs> Harvey Firestein. <laughs> oh, oh, what a cool. Head over heels, upside down. Oh, I see the Hudson Tunnel, Tunnel Project is off to a rocket start. <laughs> so let's cool. Oh, yeah, I always like to put on a three piece suit and ride the swings. Shows up every kind Kitty. and bites the crowd. Shows that make us grip our seats with excitement. Shows like this where ferocious tigers from distant lands come to quicken our blood. Bang and This is the side of Admiral Nimitz you don't read about in school. That's a big mistake. Tigers hate pool skimmers, everyone knows. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. One of the cats shows the tiger rag in Dunkin' 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 From the jaws of a tiger to the hoopla. And hoopla sure is short. Who needs a seatbelt? He goes round and around, up and down, going nowhere in a hurry. Hey, he's reading my shrink's notes. <laughs> well, and Billy slips and walks with no the blood for the rest of his life. As long as it's action. Now for the good old merry go round carousel, flying horses. Whatever we call them, they afford a merry world for youngsters from 6 to 60. Then turn it off, please, for the love of God, you have to turn it off! Shooting the shoots at a mile a minute. Jesus, it's a miracle anyone ever survived a trip to Coney Island. Seeing the world upside down in this Bread and butter? Plane. Bread and butter. Yes, commuters are delighted by New York's safe, reliable or subway system. The top of the park to see the whole show, only to face a vertical drop of 90 feet. Step by step, day by day. Millie browns her panties, riding the world famous Fika later. <laughs> hey. Much like this short. <laughs> He's actually talking about Peyton Place. <laughs> Pretty sure the guy in the white shirt is on Rumspringer. I'm gonna go buy five houses. <laughs> Dusk descends. 
as night falls, vampires take over Coney Island to increase the numbers Lost Boys style. Hey, it's the Christmas light show at PNC. Fantastic hmm. shapes pierce the crisp coastal air. The sky becomes a living lacework of brilliance and color. And long into the night, the crowds make merry with laughter, song, and fun. Coney Island. A Mecca by day. A Medina by night. The dynamic fun land of a nation. Hooray! Hello. Coney All Island. right, and that was Coney Island. Uh, I learned that... Um, uh, you could just put, you just spin out on the floor a few times and just call it a ride. Fine, it doesn't matter. You know, they they, they were tougher back then. They, they were they were able to take that kind of stuff. Exactly, it's like the old thing I saw about the time that uh, you know, my grandfather killed a stag with his bare hands, and me, I ate a whole thing of cookie dough and fell asleep on the toilet. That's tough. I would like yeah. to see you short about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Let's see where the evening takes us. Right. Uh, so we've got two more shorts before we, uh, before we wrap up for the night. Uh, this might be a good time to plug that uh, Death by Improv and Suburban Improv, we will be back at the Union County Performing Arts Center on uh, Friday and Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, we've got a few really cool shows planned. Of course, Death by Improv is going to be there. Uh, we are also going to be doing a uh, improv show, sort of with a Thanksgiving theme. Uh, we're going to have a, um, oh, a, a Dungeons and Dragons inspired uh, improv show, which I'm very excited about. Yes, it's, gonna be great. Uh, it's an excuse to finally bust out those elf ears that I've been holding on to <laughs> for years and years and years. Uh, so yeah, uh, tickets are not on sale yet. Uh, but Sweet. they should be very shortly at ucpack.org. And just pay attention to DBI's uh, social media. Uh, you know, Facebook is probably the one we're most active. We also have Instagram, YouTube, of course. Uh, we are not yet on Space Hey, which I just discovered today, which is a social network which is designed to look like 2006 MySpace. Um, <laughs> It is real, and uh, I just discovered it like 20 minutes before we got on the Zoom tonight. But it is, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely something I'm going to be looking into. Uh, we're going to be looking very strongly into it, and more and more people are saying that. Uh, so we have another short. Uh, we've learned about the birth of the telephone tonight. I think it might be nice now to also learn about the early days of television. Uh, oh, this one is called Television Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caitlin, if you just remember this one, we have to jack the audio up all the way on the short. Thank oh, you. Yeah. All right, and uh, I will let the short do the talking, which we will then talk over. Oh, crummy model, oh, crummy model bridge. You can see the strings. Five degrees, wind from the southwest, and a chance of rain in the morning. Hmm. Is he more dead? Speed highways, plastic packards, streamlined cities, edible underwear, Legos, as far as the eye could see. To get a glimpse of that future, Army Navy Screen Magazine presents a new department tomorrow. Previewing our what is this? A future made for ants? The new fields ahead. For the first in our tomorrow series, let's look into a brand new development. Television. Here's an expert with a lowdown on the inside facts. Merv Griffin. Dr. <laughs> the rest is I had a flame to rest these ones. And former member of the Federal Communications Commission. I'm glad to now serving 25 to life in Leavenworth. Service of America. I believe in this world to come. I think it's going to be a pretty good world. But I've been asked to tell you about television. So I don't have a lot of room for optimism. <laughs> television is most certainly here to stay. It's going to brighten the world of your home. But more important to many of you, it's going to create a lot of new jobs. Enfield is going to need a new girlfriend every week, after all. 
take a look at what is actually happening now. Nine experimental telecasting studios are already operating. Seven of them are owned by Aaron Spelling. <laughs> While the electronic industry is busy finishing its war job, a handful of people, girls, ex-vets... Oh, please let my friend work, please! ...television field alive. Experimenting, ironing out kinks... Uh, you know, I have a lot of fond memories of watching the Scarlett O'Hara, Napoleon, and Marquis de Lafayette show on Nick at Night when I was a kid. <laughs> Teamed up with sound to bring the world to your easy chair. This is too much power for one person, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> you worry! Push me faster, Fred. Wee. Oh my God, my brakes! <laughs> and history in the making. When television networks are formed, you will have a direct wire to every place a television camera can be set up. A world of sports. And here's a shot from inside the cockpit of Apollo Negative Thirteen. <laughs> Interpreter number two, riding one. The field races past the stand with interpreter on top. No man. That's a man's used by thirty lengths. As Colin world legs behind and compassion for man, fellow man has broken his leg and it needs to be shot. Ruffing is taking his time. Ah, star of the popular PBS Kids show Fetch with Red Ruffing. Out here at Madison Square Garden tonight to witness the semifinals of the Golden Glove. Telecasting is done on a limited. Oh, this is from the night, uh, gentleman Jim Corbett fought Eskimo fellow bare knuckled for 113 rounds. I can't Where believe it. Mike Tyson just bit Holyfield's ear. <laughs> You'll see transmitted by television, newsreels, and super Hollywood productions. And I don't know, probably a reboot of Smart Guy or something. Plays and musicals. Command performances in your own living room. 101 pounds of fun. That's my little honey bun. The Temple of Doom opening is a little more low key than I remember. <laughs> what those hats are they? Knights of Columbus? I think they must be. And at Everett General Hospital, where there are these men bravely lost their shirts fighting for your <laughs> freedom. The largest television screen in the free world. <laughs> now, without the technical improvements that will come after the war, the television picture has the quality of a good home movie. Hmm. The war models in OSHA Stamp Theater presents. Here's a practical working model with a 16 by 22 inch screen. Now, who would ever need a screen that big? Time you're being measured for civvies. So just a retail price, $74,000. Yeah, see, I bet whatever show is coming on, Jay Leno is going to try to host. Mm -hmm. WNBT New York. Well, that gives you a pretty general idea of what's happening. Now let's see how television works. See? You're going to find a new type of aerial against the skyline of America when you return. It will be a oh, really nice of them to put those footholds on there for calm. Mm -hmm. And are stopped by the horizon. So the higher the aerial, the oh, Manhattan, the crown jewel of the Adriatic. The <laughs> Some less, depending on their color. The first jacket of these fencers is reflecting more light than their dark trousers. Oh, why they put googly eyes on it? <laughs> An ordinary camera picks up these differences in light and shadow. Only instead of film behind the lens, we have the iconoscope. Oh, hey, my brother's got one of those, but it had all this really funny smelling water in it. <laughs> of millions of sensitive electric eyes. These eyes pick up electric impulses from the object being televised and form a picture which is then transmitted hmm. as separate electric impulses from the camera plate The secret to the of television receiver. is to keep two 40-foot tall fencers in your basement. Pinpoints of light and shadow. I just wanted to watch American Horror Story. <laughs> if we needed to, we could teleport two fencers to Moscow in 45 minutes. Here, the process is slowed down for you. 
Actually, the impulses travel from the camera to the receiving set at the rate of four million impulses a second. And that's not that much, really. Fantastic. But our children will grow up with this miracle enriching their lives. I hope this doesn't awaken anything in me. <laughs> By harnessing electrons and vacuum tubes, our research scientists, backed by American industry, <coughs> this new means of communication to the point where it promises to become a post-war billion-dollar industry, which oh, can serve our nation ship in, a bottle. in new and wonderful ways. Well, that seems vaguely obscene. He is one of the great leaders in the world of electronics, Brigadier mm -hmm. General Sarnoff, president of the Radio Corporation of America. When the First World War ended, it was my good fortune and privilege announcing to the world that Archduke Ferdinand was still dead. Front of a new industry called broadcasting. There were some who said it had great promise. They were, were wrong. Others who said hmm? That it was a noisy, sputtering gadget, a passing fancy. <laughs> great funny. Right. You know. Now let us see what possibilities exist for television once the war ends. Within 50 years, we intend to show the world that everybody, in fact, loves Raymond. ...will be needed to make the first sets, which will retail for about $200. That translates to about $100 per inch of screens. Help water. Electronic experts, assemblers... Milkers? <laughs> machinists... Kramer! ...personnel... Sheet metal workers, drill press operators, spot welders. Plumbers, bakers, and candlestick makers. Major Wardle, <laughs> GIs with radio and radar experience. 85,000 maintenance men are going to be needed to install and service the 30 million sets expected to be sold within the first 10 years of full scale. <laughs> <laughs> 135,000 jobs are going to open up in the new shops and sales organizations that will supply the huge consumer demand. All in all, 300,000 well-paying jobs are expected to be created by television within five years after the new industry. Really that's a more well below the poverty, poverty line. Yeah, of course, most of those jobs are just going to be as assistants for Oprah. Not television production. Here's a man who qualifies as an expert on that subject. Meet Mr. Gilbert Seldes, head of production of the Columbia Broadcasting System. Uh, no, that's I Chuck Schumer. You may be interested in jobs in television production, but I think you're entitled to the hard... You know, it would be another 50 years before viewers could handle this kind of raw sexual energy on their screens. <laughs> we are employing 62 people. They work a full week to put on four hours of programs on the air. That doesn't mean four hours a day, it means four hours a week. Hmm. If we were on the air eight hours a day, seven days a week, we need at least seven times as many people. So, well, obviously, there would never be demand for that much programming. Studio. There are 900 radio broadcasting stations in the United States today. And if anybody's... Bob, clear the shot! Move, move. We can just be sure that the faster we deliver good entertainment and good pictures, the more jobs we're going to create. Now, excuse me, I have a meeting with Buddy Hackett. Television with radio, for instance. Here is a radio newscaster on the air. Stanley Tucci? Oh. In the studio, one in the control. Don't think I passes it on nipples. Newscast. And a lot of work went into it before it got this far. Now as for the movies. Here is just a medium colossal production underway. Yes, it takes So I don't know about the moon landing, but I'm starting to think the Wild West was folk fake by the studios. <laughs> more material in one week. And all the studios in Hollywood sure turn out here. The Empire Theater presents the Empire Theater. Television every night is opening night and closing night too. Now let's look at some specific television jobs. It's the eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight. Some are new. Here are two men who did a job I've never heard of before. They are riding the Ike. Shaders and switchers in the control room. Woofers and tweeters and zuffaluff repeaters. <laughs> Major Tom is in trouble. And electronic experts keep it all functioning. You men with radio and radar training are only a hop, skip, and jump from the industry's needs. There will be modifications of established professions. You know, there's nothing like Grand Opera. <laughs> yeah, and there was nothing like it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
this isn't exclusively a man's world. There'll be costume designing and stage management. How progressive. <laughs> makeup, Ooh, lipstick and a nun? And almost everything else, from carpenters to model makers. But the great thing to remember is that we've just begun to discover the possibilities of television. One day we may be able to broadcast monkeys doing it. Many more are bound to develop as we go on. Oh, I have tower envy. And some interesting jobs which some of you may be qualified for. <laughs> Most of you are going to be slinging Slurpees at the 7 Eleven. Oh, wow. Hey, look at Jedi at Temple. The United Nations can better understand each other and live together in the world of tomorrow. Coming up next, a very special episode of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Oh, All right, that was Television Tomorrow. Uh, mm. I learned that televisions apparently are made entirely out of old used bongs. Yes, exactly. Tubes, tubes filled with very stinky water. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have one more short left before we sign off for the evening. So uh, just a couple last uh, little plugs. Uh, remember, keep an eye on ucpac.org uh, for tickets for our Thanksgiving weekend shows. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep an eye on our social media pages, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Death by Improv. I don't know that. De yeah, deathbyimprov.com, I think, just got a little bit of an update. So we'll, we'll probably have some stuff up there. Uh, and then, yeah, just stay attention. Keep watching. The stay attention. Stay attention. And sorry, my wife uh -oh. is playing with my lightsaber. Um, that came out all wrong. Uh, <laughs> I know that came out exactly as it was supposed to. Short. Yeah, I. I so that's where the noise is. During the from. fencing thing, I tried to play around with it. And I don't know if oh, it picked up by the mic, but it definitely hurt. Well, cool. All right, so let me power this thing down, and uh, we'll move on to our last uh, short for the evening. Uh, this one is another one. We're going back to the subject of love, uh, because uh, we've just got a lot of love to give. Right. And stuff. Um, so this one's called Dating Do's and Don'ts. Uh, I think the title is pretty self explanatory. And uh, Caitlin, if you'll take it away, and we will uh, take it forward. Don't, don't do it. We will. Don't do it. Do's and don't it. Okay. Okay. Okay, you boys. <laughs> Cool. Let we'll me join dating do's and don'ts already in progress. What's that? Subtle amber coloring in a tastefully raised type. My god, it even has a watermark. <laughs> hmm. Oh yes, the ticket he told me about. We had to say tickety because the Kaiser took away our word 20. <laughs> on my broken ankle. Doc says I'll T -t Today, all Junior? I have to stay off my feet for a week or so. Anyway, here's the ticket for the high team carnival. The what? It's too late to turn it in, so you have yourself a time and tell me all about it. P.S. Love the Cabin. One couple. A single pair. A lone duo. A one of two. I'm just going around with the crowd. Just me and the girl. Hmm. Well, that's all right. Only, what girl? What is Ooh. girl? How get girl at carnival? <laughs> How do you choose a date? Well, it should be soft to the touch and just start to turn brown. Well, one thing you can consider is looks. Woody thought of Janice and how good-looking she was. Before the accident. You really have to rate to date somebody like her. <laughs> yes, he'd enjoy that. Except, well, it's too bad Janice always acts so superior and bored. She'd make a fellow feel awkward and inferior. And believe me, Woody doesn't need the help. <laughs> Well, perhaps someone who doesn't feel superior. There's Betty. She seems yet, DTF. Yes, it just doesn't seem as if she'd be much fun. What about Anne? She knows how to have a good time and how to make the fellow with her relax, have fun too. 
Oh, it was nice of him to take that Pinocchio donkey boy out on a date. Oh, he's appreciated. And would be fun on a date. I'm a man. I need to feel loved. I need to be desired. And for his first date. But just how should he ask her? And what if she refused? No, it won't be easy asking for that first date. Little bro. Woody, hi. Hi, Ed. What you doing? Just thinking. Don't work too hard. Oh, man, it's so cool that my big bro knows how to use one of them rotisserie phones. <laughs> Ed, is this private? No, stick around if you like. In fact, it turns me on more. Well, hello, Edward. I thought I heard you come in. Hi, Ed. Mom, what's for supper? Oh, Mom, is it all right with you if I have a date Saturday night? Well, of course. You generally go out on Saturdays. Uh, hello. May I speak to Mary, please? But, Mom, this is different. A date. You I eat them. I haven't asked her yet, but I'd like to take Aunt Beavis to the high school. Aunt Carnival. Beavis? Well, that's a nice but girl, but <laughs> a date. Well, you're rather young. Oh, Mom, give him a break. I think he can swing it. We all you know, under the Hayes Code, up. they couldn't say what it was well, until 1970. You don't overdo on dating. Ed knows what I mean. We, <laughs> we go on dates all the time. Hey, hey Mary, Mom. I just called up to check on the night. I think I can get by a little earlier than usual. Sears portraits starting I'll at eleven ninety nine. All right, Mary. Bye now. Mm -hmm. Boy, you sure make it sound easy. Well, it is easy when you're really, really ridiculously good looking. But I don't think I'll know what to say, what to talk about. Now, don't worry about that. The Avengers of Super Brother. Old self. Come on, let's see what's for supper. Wait a second. Oh, Mom, is the floor dry yet? Yeah, yes, but know. I'm not. Mom! Nine one one, I have an emergency. W would you go out with me? <laughs> no one would be seated during the epic phone dialing scene. Hello, Mrs. Davis? This is your is the daughter is I intimidating mean, to, to, to talk to is you <laughs> how do you ask for a date well i'm sure the guy working in the produce section can help you out what about this uh ann well uh how about a date uh, no <laughs> well really no thanks woody Oof. time to consider the other hmm. team well suppose he did it this way Hi, Anne. What you doing Saturday night? How's about we paint that town I red, sweet I'm cheeks? Oh, yeah? Any chance of giving him the brush off for me? Well, of all the nerves! All seven trillion of them! Oh, another way? Anne? This is Woody. Somebody's poisoned the water hole! It's carnival Saturday, and. Well, would you like to go? Sorry, Cedric Tigriari asked me. I said I'd go. But I think I can go. That would be fun. Yeah. Well, shall I pick you up about 8 o'clock? I was just going to say, 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock Saturday. I think it'll be all right, but I'll let you know for sure. Bye. Police pinpoint Anne's disappearance to 8 p.m. Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> Ah, oh, she's getting ready to do her Karnak bit. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Usually there's animated birds helping me get dressed around now. <laughs> Come in. Hi, Anne. Hi, Judy. Oh, establishing names right at the top. That's just good scene. Why aren't you being Chris to little sister? I'm getting ready for my date tonight with Woody. Oh, Woody? Oh, oh huh? honey. A date, huh? What'll you do? Go to some fancy place for dinner? No, silly. Worship the Cthulhu? We're going to carnival, and then you'll bring me home. Oh, that doesn't sound like much. Oh, we'd have fun at the carnival, you and I, wouldn't we? Yeah, oh, we'd yeah. just get hammered. And I'm going to have fun in just that way. I think the important thing about a date is to have a good time. You don't need to spend a lot of money to do that. You, you don't enjoy. have to be rich. Or movies, or parties, or anything. 
And you leave your boyfriend enough money, so I'll ask you again. My. Yes, sexual economics 101. Ready. I'm not early late. Mom and Dad and I have an agreement about what time to come in. Good agreement. Uh, will you be honey and get my stockings from the bathroom? Sure. She turned into Steve Perry. Mom, do we have any cleaning fluid? Someone did something disgusting to your Cosmo, and it sure wasn't me. Oh, here, let me. No, no, that's it, son. Look, Look at your that, bed. Stanley. Your first date is mighty important. Yeah. I'm gonna huff this. Is that okay? Yeah. Were you excited tonight? If you Why is Grandpa's urn on the table? So was I. I took my date seriously. A date was a major event. Why, the night of my first date, <laughs> my date had a flat tire and he was an hour late. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even bother to sure. call. Sure. When he finally came, I had to run upstairs and do my face and my hair all over again. Oh, I was so upset. That fella had a lot to learn about girls. Lucille. <laughs> After she met me. Oh. And the moral of that story is that I should be on time tonight, right? You bet. And the same goes for Anne. Any girl who can't be ready Join us on the other side, Woody! <laughs> well, what are you doing? Trying to strangle myself. Go find a mirror so you can see yourself. <laughs> Not too late to have another one, honey. Hi, Woody. Oh, hi. I don't want to achieve yeah. immortality through my work. Oh. I want to achieve it through not dying. Anne won't expect flowers, will she? Ah, oh, don't worry. Her expectations are already really low. because it's a special occasion. Of course, if you want to take she just flowers anyway, bed. there's no law against it. But, but I don't have to unless it's a ritzy affair. That's the general idea. Flowers for a prom or a very special party. Otherwise, like a good party need... at the Kennedy compound. Mm. Hey, I'll have to run. Me too. See you later. I'm going, folks. All right, Ed. Have a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Hot Dog Con 56 is in full swing. Sad that this was Rudolph Valentino's final role. <laughs> oh, Marvel villain Bat Rock the Leaper. Hitler's death car! <laughs> Tonight I expect you to be manhandled in the parking lot by a buffoon who can't even find your bra clasp. I hope they do bastards again! Snap into it, yeah! Here you go, courtesy of Jim Jones! Hey, move your meat, lose your seat! <laughs> No stoner meal more satisfying than hot dogs and hotter chocolate. Oh, last call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. But when you're having so much fun, time goes all too fast. Hey, that happens to a lot of guys. It's the time Anne had set for getting home. And now, good night. The end of a perfect evening. But how do you say good night? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Don't when you're famous, me. they let you do it. <laughs> they want rabies. What am? Well, there it is, Woody. The closest you'll ever get. Mm -hmm. Not this under my ear. <laughs> or it could go this way. <laughs> Well, so long. <laughs> this is Anne's preferred ending. Just like that. After all, a girl likes to know you've had a good time. So let's try saying good night again. One but more. But this away. time with tongue. Well, it's getting late. Yes, it is. I'd ask you in for a bite to eat if it were so late. Um, Man, I turned into a werewolf. Something next time. Say, that sounds good. I'll call I you I love next week. sandwiches. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I had loads of fun. So did I. Good night, Woody. Night, Anne.
can't believe I'm gonna get to eat a sandwich. Omar coming! Oh, the end for Woody and Ann, that is. All right. Yay. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. That is our show. Uh, we are, I'm Mick, and that's Farley, and we are part of Death by Improv. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, thank you. Thank anything you. else we want to plug? Anything else we want to uh, add? Yeah. Or Keep an eye on the Facebook. Keep an eye for the shows coming up at the Thanksgiving weekend. Yes. Uh, have a happy Honda Days to all who celebrate. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, we will see you again real soon. Yes. Have a good night. Thank you. Woo hey, woo hey. Ow, I'm burning myself on a lightsaber blade. <laughs> oh, no. And... It's right. It'll carterize oh, uh, itself. Actually, darling, you can stop the stream, too, over there. This is the... I'm going to uh, try and force close it. For, okay. Force close what? This is the director's cut stuff that you don't normally force get close. to see. Is that like a, is that an Jedi trick? Force close. <laughs> force close. All right. Oh, How you doing there, darling? <laughs>